Chapter 21 of the Shri Sai Satcharita In this chapter there is the story of V H Thakur who met the Kannada saint Appa who gave him his copy of Vichar Sagar and asked him to read it and told him that he would later meet Baba and receive his blessings The second leela is of Anantrao Patankar and the parable of the mare and the nine lumps of dung symbolic of the navvida bhakti and its significance and lastly the pandarpur pleader who criticized nulkar for going to baba for a cure of his ailment now i'll narrate how v h thakur met baba a devotee named v h thakur during His tour of duty met the Kannada saint Appa. Appa gave him a copy of Vichar Sagar and asked him to read it and told him that he would later meet Baba and receive his blessings. And so it came to pass. And Baba tells Thakur that merely reading a spiritual text is not fruitful. To achieve your goal in the spiritual path you must read it mindfully understand it then inculcate its teachings into your daily life this is a gem for all of us that when we read baba's charita we must do the same a little about the book vichar sagar nishal das the author of vichar sagar was a very prominent vedant scholar He was born in 1791 and passed away in 1863. His work was written in Brij Bhasha that is Hindi and later translated into Marathi. It is about the metaphysics of the Upanishad and about Hindu philosophy. The main point of the book was to expound upon the philosophy of advaita vedanta and the non dualistic approach in the vedas many hindu theological colleges use this book in their curriculum now i will narrate the story of anantrao patankar a resident of pune who came to have baba's darshan after prostrating at baba's feet he said I have read and studied the Vedas and the Vedanta and the Upanishads and heard all the Purans yet my mind is restless without peace of mind this knowledge is futile I have heard how you easily give peace of mind to so many people by your mere glance and playful words so please take pity on me and bless me Then Baba narrated the parable of the mayor who passed nine lumps of manure before the merchant. The merchant swiftly collected all of them. Then Dada Kelkar explained the meaning of the parable to him. The mayor is God's grace and the nine lumps of manure are the nine modes of bhakti that Lord Shri Ram explained to Shabari. I will briefly give the meaning of each type of bhakti and then give examples of Baba's devotees who fit into these modes of bhakti along with incidents that explain their character. However, Baba's devotees were par excellence and were endowed with more than one mode of bhakti. Navvida bhakti they are shravanam that is hearing the attributes excellence or wondrous achievements which are recited or read to kirtanam that is reciting three smaranam that is calling to mind and meditating upon the names and protection of four is pada sevanam washing and kneading of the feet five is archanam that is outward worship with rituals 
6 is vandanam or adoration 7 dasya or service including menial work 8 sakya cultivating fellowship and 9 atmanivedan consecration of oneself unto this is a list of the types of bhaktis and the names of the devotees who adopted them shravanam balabhate kaparde bhishma upasani shama ram maruti and numerous other devotees kirtan dabolkar gavankar das ganu Mureshwar Pradhan, Bhishma, Adakar, Bivi Dev, and the Tendulkar family. Smaranam, Shama, Mahali, Mega, and Nachne. Padasevanam, Lakshmi Bai Kaparde, Mrs. Pradhan, Abdullah, Tatya, Bagoji, Butti, Kaparde, Bhishma, Dabolkar, Nimonkar, Bhalabhate, and Dhumal. Archanam, Dr. Pandit, Mole Shastri, Jyotindra Tarkar, and Nachne. Vandanam, Isapatnekar. Dasya, Abdullah, Nivasakar, Radha Krishna Mai, Malsapati, Baija Mai, and Nanavali. Sakya, Shama, Chandrabai Borkar, Bade Baba, Dr. Pile, and Jyotindra Tarkar. Atmanevedan, Dikshit, Swami Sai Sharnanan, Radha Krishna Mai, and Megha. Many of these devotees fall into more than one mode of bhakti and are a wonderful composite of them. Baba laid a great deal of emphasis on Shravanam and daily there was regular reading of Jnaneshwari, Bhavartha Ramayan, Guru Charitra, Eknath's Bhagwat in Shirdi. Baba often sent a devotee to get Dakshina from Job or Dikshit and the devotee got the answer to his doubt upon hearing the chapter being read. All of Baba's Ankita devotees like Chandorkar, Dikshit, Kaparde, etc. have graduated from the class of Shravan. However, because Baba favoured this type of Bhakti, they never failed to attend the readings of Dikshit or Kaparde. Leelas Shravanam Baba emphasises the importance of Shravanam. Leela number one. Pansare heeds Baba's advice. This is a short Leela of Pansare. A devotee named Pansare visited Shirdi. He and Jog became friends. Then Jog asked Pansare to sit and listen to him while he read the Jnaneshwari. But Pansare didn't pay any attention to his advice. Instead, he would go and sit in the Dwarkamai. One day, Baba sternly said, You don't listen to the Jnaneshwari being read by Job, nor do you read it yourself, and as soon as you get up, you come here. Now go and sit with Job. Pansare had no other choice but to obey Baba. Leela number 2 Ramchandra A. Deshmukh does Parayan of the Charita. Ramchandra A. Deshmukh was a resident of Shirdi, but he didn't believe in Baba. Once his daughter fell ill and had a relentlessly high fever and was admitted in Gondkar Hospital. Her blood and urine test confirmed the diagnosis of typhoid. She was administered the appropriate antibiotics and the best possible care was given to her. However, Deshmukh was displeased as the recovery was slow and she had to remain in the hospital for 45 days. His wife was ardently devoted to Baba. 
she gave the child uday mixed in water and the child regained her health this was the turning point in deshmukh's life and he became a devotee the very next day deshmukh bought a marathi charita and started doing parayan the moment he started reading it a big frog appeared and sat in front of him every day the frog appeared just as he started reading and listened intently to him as he read the chapters assigned for the day upon completion of the chapters the frog would scamper away on the 7th day deshmukh completed the parayan and the frog listened to it then the frog disappeared never to be seen again this was taken from ambrosia in shirdi written by ramalinga swami kirtan baba's rehm nazar breathes life into a dead man das gano a police constable turned into kirtan car by baba's grace chapter 15 of the sri sai satcharita describes how das gano was established in the naradya kirtan padati baba admonished das gano for his elaborate dress and outward show the only prerequisite was purity of heart and soul with intense passion for bhakti das gano had a wonderful metallic tinkling voice and because of his kirtans baba's fame spread throughout maharashtra he had a ritual that he followed first he would take baba's permission then at the place of kirtan he would keep baba's photograph on a stool offer prayers to it and only then would he start his kirtan On one of his visits to Shirdi, Das Ganu was invited to a village nearby. He went to take permission when Baba said, "Ganya." Baba called Ganu Ganya. "Take bhav with you." Baba called Jyotendra Tarkad bhav. Das Ganu had no problem in taking bhav with him, but he did not want to break his routine with Baba. Bhau used to light Petromax lanterns in the Dwarka Mai daily and do Baba's seva. However, Baba told Ganu not to worry about that as someone else would light the lanterns. Baba insisted, rather ordered him to take Bhau along with him. The village was about 8 or 9 kilometers from Shirdi. they had to walk to the village due to lack of transportation finally they reached there and it was past dusk and getting dark they hung the lanterns in the four corners of the place then das ganu placed baba's photograph on the stool did puja and started the kirtan the bhil leader challenges baba to resurrect the dead person A huge crowd had gathered there and were immersed in the kirtan. Then there was a commotion. About 8 well-built bheels came there. They were carrying a dead body on a bier. The leader of the group came up to Das Ganu in a threatening stance and asked, "Stop all this noise," he said. Then he pointed to Baba's photograph and asked, Who is this? Das Ganu, oblivious of what had happened, waxed forth on the divinity and greatness of Baba. The leader then said, "If your God is so great, He can surely give life to the dead." The leader further threatened to kill all of them if the person was not resurrected. Das Ganu politely asked him to be seated. Then he turned to Bhau and asked him his opinion. Bhau told Das Ganu to continue with the kirtan, for he knew it was Baba's leela. Then he added, 
घनो महाराज सिंह सही रहम नजर करना बच्चों का पालन करना ही देन एडेड लिव द रेस्ट एट बाबा स्वीट ही विल श्योरली प्रोटेक्ट अस दास गनो अगेन स्टार्टेड सिंगिंग एंड सोन ही वॉज इमर्स्ड इन इट ऑब्लिवियस ऑफ हिस सराउंडिंग्स ही वॉज डांसिंग विद जॉय एंड डिवोशन Bhau was looking intensely at the dead person. After some time, the dead person struggled and set himself free from the bier and sat up. Bhau then went to Das Ganu and said, "Maharaj, stop the kirtan for a while. Baba has done our work. That man is alive. Now there is no danger for our lives." The leader and the group came to das ganu and asked him about baba then he promised ganu that he and his relatives would definitely visit shirdi after the incident bhau and das ganu went to the dwarka mai and fell at baba's feet baba said are ghaniya if my bhau had not accompanied you yesterday you know what would have happened to you Simultaneously they both replied Baba all this is your leela nevertheless please look after us and save us from these adverse situations and continue to shower your blessings on us This leela is taken from Sri Sai Anubhav Tarkaranche Smaran In 1915 this leela occurred of Baba's grace on Shantaram Nachne and S M Fanse Shantaram Nachne and S M Fanse and some others were traveling by bullock cart at night in a dense jungle This was the Ranshet Pass notorious for being infested with tigers It was a dark night Suddenly the bulls of the cart took fright and started moving backwards Luckily they were not dragging the cart sideways because that being a hilly pass with a steep slope on one side of the narrow road had the bulls dragged the cart on that side it would have been all over for them as they would have fallen into the ravine Then Fanse pointed with his hand to something and shantaram saw the glinting eyes of a tiger crouched on the road fanse wished to save the cart from being pushed to the ravine and so he wanted to get down and place big stones or sticks as a brake to the wheels so he asked shantaram to hold the reins of the bulls shantaram held them As he held them he roared Hail Sai Baba run Sai Baba come Sai Baba come to our help The others also began to shout and the tiger got frightened by the volume of the sound and ran away by the side of the cart Thus they were saved So it was the faith in Baba and the courage that Baba gave Nachne that saved the situation This is taken from the life of Sai Baba written by Narsimha Swami ji. Pad Sevanam. This incident happened in Mrs Pradhan's life. Mrs Pradhan had a dream in Santa Cruz that Baba came to Santa Cruz and that she did Pad Puja with turmeric and saffron. Chandorkar interpreted it to mean that Baba wanted her to do regular pad puja at home. So he asked her to go to Shirdi with a pair of silver padukas. Accordingly, she went and placed the silver padukas at Baba's outstretched legs and took them away and brought them home. Baba then said to Chandorkar, "Nana, See this mother has cut off and carried away my feet. This expresses his appreciation of her paduka worship. 
and ever since then Baba's Paduka is being worshipped at Pradhan's home. This was taken from the life of Sai Baba written by Narsim Swamiji. Archanam During Shantaram Balwant Nachne's 1913 visit, Baba said, We should not trust madmen to a group in which Shantaram was present. Shantaram did not think that the remark applied to him. But next year, it was seen by Shantaram to be a forewarning to him. He then was at Dhanu as a treasury master and at home he was doing puja to Baba's photo and other gods. Then one Ram Krishna Balwant Fanse, whose mind was deranged, was standing at the door of the kitchen some distance away from the puja room. He thought that he was harmless. But when the puja was in progress, suddenly the man darted into the puja room and grasped Shantaram's neck with both his hands and tried to bite Shantaram's throat, saying, I will drink your blood. Shantaram was thunderstruck, but a thought entered into his mind. Taking out the udharni or spoon, He thrust it into the open mouth of the man and right into his throat. The madman, however, bit Santaram's hand and fingers, which were in the mouth. The spoon got stuck in the throat. Though the fingers were hurt, his life was saved. When, with the other hand, Santaram tried to extricate the injured hand, his mother and others rushed and pulled off the madman. Meanwhile, Shantaram lost consciousness. After a time, he recovered, but the nails of the madman had dug into the flesh of his neck and left injuries thereon. He had been nearly strangled to death, but luckily escaped death. The injuries on his fingers gradually healed. The same year, when he went to Baba, Baba addressed Anna Chinchnikar and pointing to Shantaram said, Anna, if I had delayed one instance, this man would have indeed perished. The madman had seized with his hands even his throat, but I extricated him. What is to be done if I do not save my own children, who else will? This is taken from the life of Sai Baba, written by Narsim Swamiji. Vandanam When Sapatnikar and his wife went to Shirdi, Baba was returning from Lendi Bagh at that time. His wife was stunned, as he was the same fakir that she had seen in her dream. She says, Later in the day, when we went to have Baba's darshan in the Dwarkamai, my husband went forward with flowers and fruit offerings. Again, Baba said, Chalhat! When my turn came, however, Baba allowed me to place my head at his feet and made me sit near him. He then placed his palm in a container of Udi and with a little force placed the palm on my forehead and blessed me. He said, Take one, two, three, or four. How many do you want? This was in regard with my barren state. Later, I had eight sons and one daughter, and Baba fulfilled his promise. My husband was filled with remorse and repentance for having doubted Baba when Shevde spoke about Baba's benevolence. He decided to stay on at Shirdi until Baba forgave him and blessed him. Once he saw Baba seated alone in the Dwarkamai, so he ran and clasped his feet, beseeching forgiveness. Baba placed his hand on his head and made him sit close by. So he prostrated at Baba's feet and then prostrated again. Then Baba said, One Namaskar 
done with devotion will reach me. You don't have to do namaskar again and again. Meanwhile, a shepherdess came and started massaging Baba's feet. Baba looked at Sapatnekar and said, This gentleman thinks I killed his son? Do I kill people's sons? Now I shall bring a son in his wife's womb. Filled with joy, my husband again fell at Baba's feet with tears gushing down his cheeks. He ran to where we were staying and excitedly narrated what happened. This incident is taken from Sri Sai Leela magazine, volume 65, number 4, July 1986. Dasya, the Leela of Radha Krishna Mai and her service to Baba. Mai told Vaman Rao, that is Swami Sharnanand, about the dedicated self sacrifice that Bala J. Patil Nivasikar performed for Baba. Nivasikar, a zealous devotee of Baba, swept and cleaned the path that Baba took to Lendiburg. Diligently, Nivasikar woke up early in the morning at the crack of dawn and swept and cleaned the area in front of the Chaudi, the Dwarkamai, and the route that Baba took to Lendiburg. The villagers used to throw their garbage along the side of the street and they and their families used the roadside as their toilets. Nivasikar performed this job meekly and cheerfully. Indeed, he had reached that blissful stage of devotion where I, me and mine didn't exist and he saw and perceived Baba in each and everything. Gradually, I started helping him and soon took over this job from him. And after Nivasikar passed away, I contentedly did the job, no matter how much excreta or garbage was thrown here and there. It is said that Mai swept the street backwards, so she wouldn't step on the area that she had just swept. How she did it? God only knows. Nivasikar was a true devotee and his life was a model that all of us can learn from and emulate in our lives. Nivasikar was an affluent farmer and his wife and children resided on their farm. Every year after the harvest, Nivasikar brought the entire yield to the Dwarkamai and placed it before Baba. Whatever Baba gave him, he and his family survived on that. As far as clothing was concerned, he asked Baba and followed his advice. Later, he gave up having his meals and eating food, so Baba prevented this by sending him his bakri, which he ate as it was Baba's prasad. He only drank the holy water that Baba's feet were washed with and the water that flowed from Baba's body while he had a bath. Nivasakar passed away peacefully, uttering the one-lettered word Om and remembering Baba at that time. This was taken from Sri Sai Nate Sharani, written by Swami Shai Sharnanan and translated into Marathi by B. V. Kher. Sakha Keshav Pradhan's Unique Faith in Baba Pradhan had such immense faith in Baba that if a scorpion or other poisonous insects were found in his house or courtyard, he fearlessly took them and placed them before Baba's idol and said, Why are you troubling me so much needlessly? Why do you put these poisonous creatures after me? He was sure that Baba would fulfill his wishes and therefore his wishes became adamant and stubborn demands. Pradhan got up early in the morning and after worshipping Baba, he stood in front of the idol and pestered Baba. One day, he stood in front of the idol and said, Baba, you have come here to stay. 
Don't you think that there should be a beautiful flower garden so I can offer flowers to you? Every day I do your puja with but a few flowers. I do not like this at all. So, why can't you provide me with a beautiful fragrant flowers? Then he got saplings of juy and jai and planted them and looked after them with a great deal of love. The result was that after 4 or 5 years there were so many flowers that the neighbors and villagers helped themselves to as many flowers as they wanted. One day he stood before Baba and said, "Baba, you know that the river is far away. I need fresh water to do your puja. Does it please you that I have to go so far and fetch it?" Don't you think that water should be nearby? Having said this, he set about digging a small well near the temple, and Baba saw to it that he got one big vessel full of water every day. This information was narrated by his descendant Shaital Pradhan. Atmanivedan This is an incident written by Kapade in his diary shirdi diary about megha's passing away he writes on 19 1912 this was a very sad day i got up very early and after finishing my prayer discovered that yet it was about an hour or so for daybreak so i lay down and was aroused for kakad aarti by bapu saheb jo kaka dikshit told me that Megha had died at 4 a.m. The Kakad Aarti was done, but Sayin Maharaj did not show his face clearly, nor did he appear to open his eyes. He never threw glances spreading grace. After we returned, arrangements were made for the cremation of Megha's body. Sayin Baba came just as the body was being brought out and loudly lamented his death his voice was so touching that it brought tears to every eye he followed the body up to the bend in the main road near the village and then went his usual way megha's body was taken under the vada tree and consigned to flames Sain Baba could be seen distinctly heard lamenting his death even at that distance and he was seen waving his hands and swaying as if in aarti to say goodbye to his beloved devotee there was a good supply of dry fuel and the fame soon rose very high dikshit myself babu saheb jo upasani dada kelkar and all the others that were here praise the lot of mega that his body was seen and touched by sain maharaj on the head heart shoulders and feet this is taken from the shirdi diary written by the honorable mr g s kapade i will now narrate a leela that occurred in recent times The Leela of Asavari's Devotion Asavari Vaikul was a renowned Lavani singer who resided in Mumbai. Lavani is a traditional song and dance of Maharashtra. Although she was known as the Empress of Lavani, Asavari devotedly gave numerous programs singing devotional songs of Baba. Her performance left the devotees gathered there spellbound as she sang from her soul and was quite oblivious of her surroundings. Asavari was blessed with a melodious voice and her ardent devotion to Baba was evident from her rendition. Happily Asavari returned home after her program was over prostrated before Baba's picture. and then went to sleep 
In the wee hours of the morning, she dreamt of Baba. Asavari found herself in the Dwarkamai and Baba was seated in his usual place next to the railing. He was wearing a white kafni and a white cloth tied around his head. However, his forehead was marked with a sandalwood tripunda, that is, the three horizontal lines of Lord Shiva. He was sitting in his Dwarkamai pose, and his chilam and satka lay on the floor next to him. He looked intently at Dhunimai. Asavari climbed the steps and stood there for a moment. Baba turned his head and looked at her. He was all alone. Then he beckoned her to come in. Baba smiled and said, My child, come in. Happily, Asavari went and sat at his feet. With glee, Baba stroked her head and said, My child, keep singing my songs with devotion, as you do. Sing them for your entire life. Allah will bless you. Asavari was overwhelmed by what Baba said, and she had a lump in her throat. She knew not what to say. Baba was looking at her with empathy, and Asavari started sobbing. Those tears were of happiness. Baba pulled her close to him as if she was a small child and stroked her head. Then he said, Why do you cry? What do you want from me? Asavari was silent for a long time. Finally, she said, Baba, let me be contented and happy. I don't want anything else. In a pleasant voice, Baba repeated, Allah Malik, Allah Malik. Instantaneously, Baba disappeared. Asavari screamed, Baba, in her sleep and woke up. She looked at Baba's picture on the wall in front of her and mentally thanked him. Asavari recalls, Baba approved of my singing his devotional songs and doing kirtan. In fact, he stressed the importance of the first stage of Nau Vidha Bhakti, that is, bhajan, kirtan and chintan. He did not give importance to the other modes of devotion. I am certain by doing this, we will receive a hundredfold blessings from him. Thus, he gave me the key to his treasury. This is the reason it is written in Sri Sai Satcharita, Chapter 3, OV 12. Whoever hears my charita, narrates my charita, sings my charita in any which way, but with love and devotion, I shall never forsake him. He who sings my praises, my leelas, and describes my divinity, I will stand behind him, by the side of him, and surround him on all four sides with my grace. In Chapter 21 of the Sri Sai Satcharita, the story of Anantrao Patinkar, who had read numerous theosophical texts but did not have peace of mind, is described. Baba narrates the parable of the merchant who astutely collected the nine nodules of dung that the horse passed. Following this, his mind became peaceful and steady. The nine nodules of dungs are the nine modes of devotion. The first three, that is Shravanam, hearing the attributes, excellence and wondrous achievements of saints, as read or recited, Kirtan, reciting, and Smaranam, recalling to mind and meditating upon the names and perfection of the Lord, are the first steps on the ladder of devotion. Baba himself explicitly approves of Asavari singing of his devotional songs. Reference Shri Sai Leela Magazine Volume 63, Number 8 and 9, November 1984
I shall now conclude this chapter by giving the significance of the number 9. The number 9 has a profound astrological, mythological significance. Astrologically, there are 9 Navgrahas or 9 planets, Navratna or 9 gems that influence the human being, and Navdhanya or 9 grains that appease the planets. The human body has Navdwar or 9 orifices. Spiritually, we celebrate Navratri or the nine days of festival of Nav Durga or nine goddesses. There are Nav Nats or nine sages of the Nath Sampradaya and Nav Narayan or nine forms of Lord Vishnu. But most importantly for us Baba devotees, Baba stressed the importance of Nav Vidha Bhakti or the nine modes of devotion. In Chapter 12 of the Shripad Shivalab Charitra, the meaning of the number 9 is described superbly. It says, Paramatma is beyond this universe. When the number 9 is multiplied by any digit, the sum total will always be 9. The number 9 thus signifies the changeless Supreme Self or the Divine Lord Sainath. And this concludes the commentary on the chapter. Om Sai Ram